In this section, we'll take a look at some GIS applications. This relates to the use of uh, the Wikipedia page, which has some good examples of GIS applications. We'll pick a few of these that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail. The first example is crime mapping, which has become a widely used GIS application in recent years. The emergence of so much spatial data and data that can be displayed using either XY positions or addresses means that people can make uh, connections between places on a map and events. And in this case, we see a map that was created uh, mapping out homicide in Washington, D.C. over a two-year period. You can see the method of homicide as well as the uh, pinpointed locations of homicides. Crime mapping applications include doing date and time analysis, predictive modeling to attempt to understand how to better assign policing units and to predict crime incidents by either season, time of day, neighborhood location, and then also connections between crime and other social factors. GIS and hydrology is another area that's dealt with on the page, and it provides some interesting examples uh, which are widely used in GIS for environmental mapping. This is just a global look, uh, which is basically a composite image that was made by using satellite data intended to include uh, major airflow and cloud formation patterns. The purpose of this image is actually more artistic than it is analytical. But here's an analytical application, in this case, mapping out drainage basins within a county, in this case, Clackamas County, Oregon. And what you can see here is the pattern of streams and tributaries at a high enough uh, resolution or map scale that someone could come in and then pair this up with other data in order to understand the connection between topography, drainage basins, possibly the built environment, roadways, cities, agriculture, other kinds of land, use, land uses. Of particular interest here is the use of hydrologic mapping with flood maps. So hazard mapping often will include hydrological data as well. Another example of a GIS application is remote sensing. So we'll take a couple of lo look at a couple of examples of remote sensing applications. Remote sensing is built on a simple concept, which is that the Earth reflects electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is the radiation that is generated by the sun and occurs in different wavelengths. The visible part of the spectrum generates light that we can see. Electromagnetic radiation, though, includes many more sections of the electromagnetic spectrum, and visible radiation is just part of what we can use when doing remote sensing analysis. Remotely sensed data is collected uh, at a remote position from the object being observed. And in this case, what we're seeing is a spectral curve that shows how a farmer might use remote spensi sensing to tell which sugar beet fields are healthy and which are not, if you know the typical spectral signatures that uh, reflecting sugar beet plants would give off. What this is showing us is that on the left-hand side of this diagram, the visible part of the spectrum, you expect a certain response to, uh, to average conditions of solar radiation. Notice how the response increases as you go a bit deeper into wavelengths. In this case, these are wavelengths measured in nanometers. And so as we get into an area of the spectrum, all of a sudden the, the lines might start to diverge under certain conditions. Well, someone who's doing remote sensing analysis can use this information to tune an image to look for particular reflectance in specific areas of the spectrum and then pick out stressed versus healthy plants. Another application of remote sensing is land cover analysis. In this case, uh, remote sensing imagery was used to make land cover classifications in the area around Madison, Wisconsin. This data is paired up with the National Land Cover Database to put classification categories into a means that is a, a system that is uniform around the United States. And so urban areas are classified by low, medium, and high density and surrounding areas uh, around Madison are classified as either forest or cultivated land or other kinds of land uses. Land cover classification simply seeks to represent what the cover of the land is as opposed to specific areas of how it's used. It's a very useful tool for, tool for regional analysis and planning. Another application in GIS that's gained popularity in recent years is public participation GIS. 
In participatory mapping or public participation GIS, the public is called in to do a community-based mapping session and to do collaborative mapping. And a definition would be gathering and mapping spatial information to help communities learn, discuss, build con consensus, and make decisions about their communities and associated resources. One of the important factors here is that the amount of geospatial data now available means that people can have more and more information at hand about their communities. So participatory mapping seeks to bring people into an arena where you have lots of people participating, sharing opinions, and then analyzing on the spot and making uh, suggestions about a map that can be developed by the public throughout that process. Many communities engage in this kind of mapping when they want to look for solutions to land use problems, traffic management, or potentially uh, to rezone a community or do other kinds of related tasks. Another application that's very important in GIS is wastewater and stormwater management. In this application, we're looking at the combination of information about the natural world. In this case, we have a photograph of a particular site that shows that may have some concerns of uh, water erosion or other problems such as flooding, and it's being connected together with the water infrastructure of a stormwater runoff system as well as natural features on the landscape. By collecting and mapping survey points and mapping out flow information about streams, people are better able to understand and project uh, water, water flow rates under different kinds of conditions. This kind of mapping has become quite common out of concerns over trying to prevent flooding and preserve water quality, uh, especially in areas where water resources are of direct concern. And that concludes the brief look at some, some of the GIS applications. And this isn't meant to give you an overall view, it's just meant to give you a sense of how people are using GIS in different situations.